Welcome back to Get a Grip on Rebates. Before you get in there with Juan Carlos Blacker and John Wilson, you got to hear about the hybrid 365 LED solar area light. This is the ultimate energy saving device, folks. It runs on line voltage. It runs on solar power. It runs on battery. And it knows when to be on solar power, when to be on battery, and when to be on line voltage. That's right. The ultimate energy saving device. Go to solera-solar.com. S-O-L-E-R-A-S-O-L-A-R.com. Get a grip on rebates. Hello, and welcome to Get a Grip on Rebates. As always, this is Juan Carlos Blacker. Uh, today, I have a special guest, uh, John Wilson from the Lighting Design Lab. John and I go way back in the utility and rebate world, and uh, we are going to talk a little bit about what he does and what uh, what the Lighting Design Lab does, uh, and possibly see where, where our conversations go. So let me start off by introducing John Wilson. Hi, everyone. Hi. Great to be here. I'm looking forward to joining this mix. So, John, tell us a little bit about yourself and why why you should even be on this uh, on this podcast with me. Yeah, I like it. This is like uh, uh, the live interview process for everyone to chime in on. Um, well, you know, I, I've been working in this utility space specifically with the utility programs uh, where, where the rubber hits the road. Uh, made made my background in utility program implementation for uh, the last decade or so, and. Uh, out of all the places that I've kind of got to work in utilities, this area of program implementation, right? Where the rubber hits the road, getting projects done, working with the folks who do the projects, uh, working with the end use customers. It's always just been uh, my favorite part of the job. Uh, and shoot, after a decade, if I haven't made it here, what the heck am I doing? Probably got to get out and look for another uh, look for another path in life to walk. So, uh, so in that yeah, decade, pro- John... Hey, where have you been in that decade? Tell tell us a little bit about about the places you've been, the people you've oh, seen. All right, yeah. Uh, I'll try I'll try and key it up, Doctor Seuss style here for you. Uh, so you know, boy, I was one of the lucky ones. I feel like it was a uh, r- right during uh, the two thousand seven eight recession that kicked off. I got I got a sweet job at a utility right out of college, and it was like the golden age for energy efficiency. I feel like because. Uh, the, the opportunities, the, the green grass, it just abounded. And um, there was plenty of opportunities and lots of great work to do. Um, just got my start working for a public utility, uh, implementing programs there. Went on to the Bonneville Power Administration, which for folks in the Pacific Northwest, that is kind of like the mothership of public power. I uh, got to expand beyond just lighting there. Got to work with uh, commercial rebates across the board. Um, really got to see the, the, the cool thing about Bonneville is you really get to see all the different spokes of the wheel and how a lot of stuff comes together. So that was a terrific learning opportunity. Um, one thing that really stands out is the work working with trade allies, the trade ally networks, um, because it, it's not just the pushing mechanism of utilities wanting to make things happen. It was the distributors, the contractors pulling on the other side to make right. it happen that really let you know let stuff come together so that, that's always been a highlight for me right and that's uh that was about bonneville that i met you where you when you started working i mean i knew about you at your public utility work but uh we really met and started working together when you were at bonneville uh working with those trade ally networks and again for you uh, for for our guests out there who who don't know the term trade allies here we're talking about all the uh all the the industry folks who work with these rebates that may be distributors it may be it may be contractors it may be the end users of uh, of the products uh, who are who are interested and want to get involved in these in these rebate programs with utilities so uh, and that's where john really has a lot of a lot of uh, experience uh, and i think that's if i'm not mistaken that's really what uh, took you to the lighting design lab is, is that correct yeah, that's that's totally correct. Um, you know, one of the things, so the Lighting Design Lab, I, I always love to remind people because it looks and it feels like this independent nonprofit, but it's part of City Light. It's part of the city of Seattle's municipal utility, which is a really cool thing. Um, you know, one thing sorry, I got to give a shout. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, go. Yeah, give it the, give the shout, please. I, I got I to give a shout. Even living down here in Portland, um, the city of Seattle as a utility it is pretty awesome how much they care, not just about the energy savings, they really care about the technology transfer and then like making stuff work for customers. 
So it's pretty, it's pretty cool as a utility that they are so dedicated to like working with distributors, electrical contractors, and doing it really equitably, uh, as opposed to like, we're just a utility trying to hit these targets so the regulators stay off our back. So what, what specifically does the Lighting Design Lab do? I know a lot of us here on the Pacific Northwest know about the Lighting Design Lab, but it's uh, it might not be as well known throughout the country. So tell our listeners a little bit about what what you guys do and and, and how you help uh, help trade allies connect with rebate programs. Yeah, totally. Um, Lighting Design Lab, like I said, we look, feel, and smell a lot like a sort of nonprofit, but, but we're really an arm of the utility. And specifically, we're there to facilitate what we call tech transfer, technology transfer. Uh, and, and what that means is looking at emerging technologies that end users want and, and, and that are creating new opportunities and then working with those key implementers, whether it's distributors who are trying to sell this stuff and get it in the right places or the folks who need to install it, we work with those folks to identify gaps. Like, do we need... Do we need to teach classes around this stuff? Do we need to teach best practices? Do we need to develop tools and resources? Sometimes, as you know, and this is a great example, it's just as simple as getting the right people in the room to have a key conversation, um, creating those feedback mechanisms. So we get to do a little bit of all that stuff, technology demonstration. It's a cool place to work. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, well, I love the work that the Light Design Lab is doing and having you. Uh, talk about it and then share share what they do is is great. Uh, and and one of the reasons why I think uh, we may be seeing a lot more of you on this on this podcast to help talk about uh, talk about that specific utility touch that 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 you have that I don't that I don't bring to the table. So so for those of you out there, you might see a little bit more of John uh, joining me in these calls or in these podcasts moving forward. So um, so hey, I want to talk about uh, and and have a conversation with you about that line between the utility programs and real world implementation, because as you said a couple of times, that's where the rubber meets the road. And I really want to understand, uh, or have our, have our customers, have our listeners understand what that means to you and what that means really for the utilities. How do we get that, that rubber hitting the road? Sure. You know, it, 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 it manifests in so many different ways. Um, but we've all, I don't care which side of the coin you're on, whether you're on the utility side, whether you're a, a, an industry representative, um, we've all slipped that cog where we were like, wait a second, I thought we were working together and, and you know, this project just got delayed or what, what the heck's going on? Now there's no longer utility incentives or something changed, right? Um, what, what I find just time and time again is a lot of times our, our industries have created such a symbiotic relationship together. And yet it's so simple for us to be like oil and water. And the utility folks are living over here in one side and they've got their, we're, we're just focused on our targets and trying to get it done. And we know outreach is important, uh, but bless their hearts, like they're just trying to, you know, they got their heads down. And similarly, we got folks, industry folks, and they're doing terrific work and they're experts in what they do. But sometimes we lose that. It's like a, you know, it's a relationship. You stop talking to each other. They're just, we need to get these incentives. And uh, what, what I have found is just kind of the, the special sauce for helping with that and creating the feedback mechanism is, is bringing all those folks together. Um, early in my career, I remember somebody telling me it was like a marketing thing. It was like, you can't just tell a person a message once. You got to give it to them time and time and time again. And in the utility industry, sometimes I feel like we're great at telling folks the message over and over again, but we're not good at listening to it the other way. So right. I feel like, uh, you know, Juan Carlos, when I met you, you were an advocate, you were a voice for industry, right? And so I think that's one of the reasons you really stood out is because you were like on the side of utilities, I'm telling you how we can make these programs work. Uh, right, right. Yeah. Help me help you. No, I, 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 lo I love that, uh, you know, one of the things about the lighting design lab and you in particular, John, is that you uh, you guys focus on that on that on that touch, that direct touch. You guys do a lot of trainings over there. You do a lot of educational seminars, that sort of thing. So all great. Um, and obviously, lighting design lab it focuses on lighting, but it also it also does a lot of work in terms of uh, in terms of emerging technologies and new 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 products, new types of products that might be rebated by utilities. Um, how does that work over there? 
Sure. I mean, you know, lighting is right there in the name, but I think everybody who's probably listening to this podcast understands that uh, the lines are getting blurred, right? I hope uh, I hope we're not impinging on any uh, copyright themes there for blurred lines. I think there was a big lawsuit associated with that, but we just can't <laughs> rip off the uh, Marvin Gaye beat. Uh, yeah, you know, lighting is proliferating in a way. We all know this story. Lighting is prol proliferating in such a way that it's expanding beyond just lighting. And so we can't ignore it. Um, smart buildings, smart cities, that, that's a huge topic up here in the Northwest, especially for the city of Seattle. And so that's a, it's a, it's a natural gateway or a nexus point, whatever we want to call it. Um, so it's pretty exciting to be working there. Nice. So last, last picture there for the lighting design lab, I'm going to give you a chance to get throw in one last pitch. I know that you do, again, a lot of work trainings, that sort of thing for Northwest, but uh, do you guys have any national reach that uh, some of the distributors or contractors uh, throughout the country can can uh, can tie into? Yeah, I think, thanks for that question. I, I, I appreciate that because one of the things that makes the United, excuse me, the Lighting Design Lab so unique is that we, we actually we have the special ordinance that allows us to partner directly with industry and also work with other utilities outside the region. And so uh, we, we have just recently started making things like webinars available to the rest of the country uh, while we're in this uh, unique period of our history. And um, going forward, we, we expect to be doing that with in-person trainings as well. We have a, like a flagship network lighting control training that's just been a huge success. And um, it, this feeds right back to what we were talking about earlier. It's the sort of thing when you get in there for those classes and they're interactive, it's not just preach in one direction, right? Um, folks right. come back and they want more and they and then they teach us stuff in the classes. And so it's uh, it's really cool. Awesome. Well, for those of you out there interested in what uh, what John's doing at the Lighting Design Lab or in the Lighting Design Lab in general, just give, give them a look up, see, see where, where they may be able to help you. Uh, and as I hinted a little bit earlier, John is, uh, is an expert in, in rebates and expert in utilities, uh, and, and a good friend of mine. So I, I'm going to be bringing him onto the show to, uh, to co-host with me, uh, over the next couple of, of podcasts or maybe all the rest of the podcast we'll see. Um, so welcome, welcome John to the, uh, get a grip on rebates team. We're glad to have you and, uh, look forward to talking with you more, uh, in the future. So thanks. Good to be here. Thanks all. Awesome. Well, that was Get a Grip on Rebates. We'll come back soon. Uh, again, this is Get a Grip on Rebates. I'm Juan Carlos Blacker. That was John Wilson from the Lighting Design Lab. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, thank you very much. Solera-Solar.com for the ultimate energy saving device, which is the hybrid 365 LED solar area light, equivalent to a 250 watt halide. That's right, 250 watts equivalent. It is the ultimate in energy saving because it runs on solar, it runs on battery, and it runs on line voltage. Always efficient, sometimes no energy needed, no uh, line voltage needed at all. So you gotta go to solera-solar.com, check it out.